Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve Lund, and in this video, I'm going to talk about carb cycling. What is carb cycling? How does it work? What are the different types of carb cycling you can try? And I'm also going to share with you uh, my own personal uh, carb cycling strategies of how I do it, uh, why I do it, and uh, how you can do it as well. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! So, what is carb cycling? I mean, it's pretty uh, self explanatory. It's uh, just a way of eating where you're uh, cycling between your carbohydrate intake. Uh, you have the times where you eat a low carb, fully ketogenic, maybe zero carb even. Uh, at other times, you go through moderate carb intake and uh, also high carb intake. And uh, the reason why people do it, well, most commonly is used for uh, weight loss and uh, trying to like manipulate your uh, macronutrient ratios in order to help with uh, body composition purposes. And uh, yeah, like weight loss and bodybuilders. Uh, especially kind of use it uh, for this body composition purposes. Uh, I personally do that also for that reason. So uh, I do enjoy like uh, ways of being low carb and ketogenic, but also enjoy uh, periods where I'm eating high carb. You eat carbs. So how would you go about uh, cycling your, um, you know, carbohydrates? <laughs> I mean, I said it's simple. You just eat carbs. Uh, on some days you eat low carb. Some days you eat high carb. Some days more carb. What would be like, you know, hypothetical scenarios, how to do it? I mean, there's no like real rules, <laughs> like you could structure it in many ways, but uh, I'm going to basically try to give it like an optimal blueprint for that. When it comes to macros, then you do still, still want to get your protein, regardless of the amount of carbs you're eating. So because protein is uh, very important for uh, muscle growth, as well as uh, fat loss, satiety, just general health and bone, bone density, those kind of things. Uh, so you do want to be eating like a slightly higher protein intake, uh, that's what I recommend at least. I do like to keep the protein relatively high, like between 30 to 40% is my kind of, um, I think, a good uh, sweet spot for that. It's uh, pretty high. But when, when it comes to either a low carb day or a moderate carb day or a high carb day, then uh, the difference between them is just the other macros. A low carb day is anything less than 20% carbs. So if unless you are trying to get into deep ketosis, then you don't need to be eating any... Um, any uh, let's say uh, less than that you don't need to be eating any less than you know 20 percent you can get away with 20 percent as well like on keto you probably need to eat like five percent but you can get away with even like 20 uh, percent and the fat uh, given if you're let's say doing low carb days for fat loss then you don't need to be eating like a bunch of fat either like you don't need 80 percent fat <laughs> to uh, be on a low carb day you can keep the fat even at 40 percent 30 percent and create a calorie deficit through reducing your fat intake on a moderate carb, carb day, that can be anything from uh, 30 to 40 percent calories coming from carbs, and the rest of the macros are the same. And on a high carb day, what just happens is that you reduce the fat and you increase the carbs. So the carbs can be anything from 50 to 60 percent, even depending on how many carbs you're eating. And you can even yeah reduce some of the protein intake a little bit uh, because the carbs can be a bit uh, protein sparing as a result. And uh, on a high carb day, what I like to do is definitely keep the fats uh, semi low uh, because of you know if you get high carb, high fat together, then you may be just overeating calories and that's going to be bad uh, for obviously body composition purposes. 48% body fat. What kind of different types of uh, carb cycling there is? There's many. Uh, the main ones that I know of and the main ones that I think are the most effective ones are just regular cyclical ketosis, which means that you eat keto for a certain amount of days, usually for five to six days. And on the seventh day, you have like a carb refeed day. Um, I've done it. It uh, works pretty good uh, and you do maintain some good aspects of, you know, ketosis throughout the week. But, you know, the first days after the kind of carb refeed, you may feel sluggish, you may feel low energy, you may feel actually uh, you've got the keto flow again. So in that sense, it does <laughs> take a lot more days than just one day out of your week to maintain this uh, optimal performance. So you do feel like slightly sluggish the day afterwards. The other version is carb backloading, very common one, which would be like applied to a 24 hour period. And that means that you eat low carb the first half of the day and you have carbs for dinner. Basically, you backload all the carbs into your dinner. So let's say you eat from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Then the 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. period would be low carb and 6, 8, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. would be where you have the carb dinner. And uh, yet yeah, the macros themselves are kind of different, but just backloading the carbs into the evening the rationale behind it is that um, you uh, would get like better sleep a bit if you eat carbs for dinner, then you get the serotonin boost, you get tired, get a carb coma and a crash a little bit. Because if you exercise before 
the uh, carb refeed or the carb dinner, then you can still shuttle the glucose into the cells without the need of insulin, even if your insulin sensitivity drops uh, the longer you stay awake, so to say, like your insulin sensitivity drops at night. <laughs> what I like to do is uh, just auto-regulate my carbohydrate intake based upon my physical activity. So the easiest thing to remember is that if you exercise, then eat higher carbs. If you exercise more, then eat more carbs. <laughs> if you're resting, you're not exercising at all, then eat less carbs and keep the carbs like low. If you're doing cardio or something easier, then uh, you could eat a bit more carbs, but not as much as usually I would like to prefer to uh, exercise um, or eat my carbs after resistance training because that's when my body is the most insulin sensitive. Uh, exercise activates these GLUT4 uh, receptors that shuttles glucose into the cells uh, very fast uh, without even needing insulin. So that's why I like to eat my carbs basically post-workout always. And I do this carb backloading. Uh, on the days that I work out, I have maybe approximately, if I were to guess, maybe like 250 to 300 grams of carbs on my rest days, I may have like anything from 50 to even less sometimes, maybe like 100 grams max on my rest days. On another workout day, I have 200 to 300 grams carbs. On a cardio day, I don't eat like super high carbs, but I do eat slightly more carbs to recover from that, uh, maybe like 150 grams. Another workout day, more carbs. So yeah, like I auto-regulate basically my carbs based on my uh, physical activity. The more I exercise, the heavier, the more intense exercise I do, the more glycolytic activities I do, the more carbs I eat. And the less exercise I do, if I rest, then I eat less carbs. And uh, if I do like l more fat oxidizing uh, exercises, then I'll eat also lower carb. Uh, but this isn't, it isn't uh, completely uh, set in stone. Of course, there are rest days where I also eat high carb. And there are workout days where I eat the low carb. So I'm not like, you know, set in stone with that. I'm not like uh, diehard <laughs> with that, but this would be like the general blueprint that I do try to follow that. It's easy to remember, just eat carbs based upon your exercise. And as a result of that, you can um, maintain this metabolic flexibility. And um, yeah, it's, obviously it's not the end all be all. The calorie deficit is still the most important part and uh, overall health. But I find it just a, a good way to uh, manipulate your macros and kind of still get the benefits of uh, both ways of dieting, get the benefits, both, both benefits of the low carb dieting and get the benefits of a high carb dieting without necessarily going too far with one or the other. So I'm not going uh, too keto and not going too high carb. Time to carb load. But that's basically it. That's how I do it. If you want to know how to do carb cycling and meal timing, then check out my book, Metabolic Autophagy, or the Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass video course. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.